Developed by TAD Corporation, the same company behind Toki, comes this 1988 shooter. The idea of the game is very simple. Basically blow away everything in sight while trying to avoid being hit by enemy projectiles. Each stage is completed after the allotted amount of damage has been inflicted upon the enemy. Throughout each stage you can gather bonus points, extra grenades and different weapons. It's all quite simple really and kind of fun in short blasts. This SD port by Ocean looks pretty good and even plays quite well. Unfortunately, the usage of grenades is a bit awkward because you need to hit the spacebar on the computer, which leaves you open to attack. The grenades also seem to automatically deploy as well at the most useless of times. You'll be wishing for the grenades to deploy against a tank or something, but no. They mostly activate when you're attacking soldiers. What a waste of ammunition. While the graphics are well coloured for the spectrum, I can't help feel the actual sprites are drawn way too chunky. Still, the controls are responsive enough and the game does run at a good pace. Just a shame it's not very addictive in the long run.
It's NES, Famicom is a mixed bag for sure. Some areas have laughably bad graphics such as the first stage with its ant sized soldiers. On the other hand it does have some nice tunes unlike all the other ports. The way the grenades are used is also quite odd. There are two buttons to choose from on the SNES pad however the gun and grenades are mapped to the same button. To use the grenades you have to quickly tap the button while holding it uses the gun. A very odd choice but nevertheless it seems to work quite well. While the main sprites look nicer than the Spectrum version, the actual backgrounds in the CPC port are all one colour. This would be forgivable if the game played well, but it doesn't. The enemies have no pattern at all, basically scrolling left and right. Then there's the slowdown. Oh man, this game slows down to a crawl pretty much all the time, rendering it unplayable. The Amiga port of Cabal certainly looks and sounds the best, but it's not the most fun to play. While it does play slightly faster than the ST version, it suffers from an oversized hitbox. There are many times you can clearly see that an enemy projectile has missed you, but you end up being killed. This makes the game unfair and to be honest, quite annoying. Oh and let's not forget this version also has the dumb AI for grenades from the ST version.
There are two versions of Cabal for the C64. Here's the first which was produced in the UK for the PAL markets. As you can see the graphics are nice enough and the gameplay is okay. Sadly there's no music which really makes the game a lot duller than it needs to be. As it stands, this is a good attempt at bringing Cabal to the C64, but it's not a great game by any means. And here we go with the US release. People tend to think this version is graphically inferior. Personally I don't think so. The style is certainly different but the graphics aren't that bad. The gameplay on the other hand is most definitely slower than the UK version, rendering this the poorer choice for C64 owners. Mm -hmm. 